वेलकम बैक दिस इज राकेश नाइक टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट पॉलिनोमियल रिप्रेजेंटेशन इट इज बेसिकली एन एप्लीकेशन ऑफ एरे इफ यू आर न्यू टू दिस चैनल लेट मी टेल यू दैट वी प्रोड्यूस एवरी वीडियो इन टू डिफरेंट लैंग्वेजेस हिंदी एज वेल एज इन इंग्लिश इफ यू वांट टू व्यू दिस वीडियो इन हिंदी काइंडली फॉलो द लिंक गिवन इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन एंड इफ यू हैव नॉट यू सब्सक्राइब Kindly press the subscribe button followed by the bell icon so that you will get all the notification from this channel. So, let us start calling our male representation. Basically, let us try to see what is a polynomial. A polynomial would write in this form For example, minus 10 plus 3x plus 5x square. It means we can write it like minus 10 x to the power 0, then 3x to the power 1, and 5x to the power 2. Let's call it the name of the array. And when we write minus 10 x to the power 0, we'll write minus 10. At zeroth index. Similarly, three x to the power one in oneth index will write three, and five x square in second index of the array will write the coefficient five. And we can for this we need an array named poly with with size three. And a polynomial of single variable a x can be written. As a zero, a one, x, a two, x square, up to a n, x to the power n, where a m is not zero, and the degree of a x is n. Here we say a zero, a one, a two, a n are the coefficient of the respective term. So I can take this one-dimensional array and represent at the zeroth index a zero is written, at the first index a one is written. Second index two is written like at the nth index a n is written. For a polynomial of degree n, we need n plus one terms. Let us say we are having two different polynomials x one and x two. X one is having three x five x square and seven x cube. X two is having ten plus three x plus five x square. Here. The degree of x1 is 3 and the degree of x2 is 2. So in order to add these two polynomial, what we have to do, we have to take the highest degree polynomial. It means if I want to save the addition of the polynomial x3, then then I have to take the size of x3 as degree with maximum of x1 and x2. I can write here x1 with the missing terms coefficient as zero. Here x to the power zero term is missing, so I have written here zero x to the power zero, then three x, then two, then five x square and seven x cube. Similarly, here x to the power three term is missing, so I have kept the coefficient as zero. In order to write that, I can have this representation. It means for zeroth index the coefficient is zero. For oneth index the coefficient is three. For the second index coefficient is five, and for the third index coefficient is seven. Similarly for x two, the coefficient of x to the power zero is ten. So that's why at zeroth index ten is written. For x to the power one the coefficient is three. So that's why for the first index. Three is written. Similarly, for the second index, five is written, and for the third index, zero is written. And if I want to add them, I can take the corresponding element and write. For a zero element, I can take zero and ten. It is written as x zero's coefficient of x three. So you can see the algorithm. First, I have taken i, j, k three variables to be zero. And while i is less than equal to m, I have written c k as a i plus b j, and I have incremented i by one, j by one, and k by one. 
here you see i value is 0 and j value is 0 so here at kth location this value will be written as 10 now i is increased by 1 j is increased by 1 then corresponding value are 3 and 3 so a1 value I'll calculate as 3 plus 3 and the value 6 and the value 6 I'll write as a1 coefficient of x to the power 1 the same algorithm follows here i j k value are 1 and after addition i j k value is increased by 1 now i value is 2 j value is 2 and k value is 2 so 5 and 5 are added to find a2 so 10 as the coefficient of x square similarly i j k value are increased by 1 so i j k value are now 3 7 and 0 will be added and the value 7 is written as the coefficient of x to the power 3 so this is how you got the summation of two polynomials here we got 10 x to the power 0 plus 6 x to the power 1 10 x square and 7 x cube this is represented in the form of this array and if I want to go a little bit ahead I can represent the polynomial in this way also I take the maximum size let us say the polynomial size is 100 and I will take a structure I will define the first one is coefficient and the second one as exponent I'll, and I will write this structure as polynomial term and I will define a class called polynomial I will be having a private that polynomial term of maximum size I will define I will take total term and two operations I am defined I am creating a polynomial it is a constructor and I am adding two polynomials. In this video, we are only concentrating on addition of polynomials. Now, let us try to understand this type of addition with the help of an example. Here, a polynomial x1 is given as 7x to the power 4, 5x square, and 3x to the power 1. And polynomial x2 is given as 5x cube, 3x to the power 1, and minus 8x to the power 0. Here the first term that we are taking is having highest power. In my earlier example, I have taken the first element as the lowest power. But here in this example, I am taking the highest power. That is 7 x to the power 4. And to represent it at the 0th index, the coefficient is 7 and the exponent is 4. It means x to the power 4 is having coefficient 7. Similarly, x square is having coefficient 5 and x to the power 1 is having coefficient 3. For other polynomial also, x cube is having coefficient 5, x to the power 1 is having coefficient 3 and x to the power 0 is having coefficient minus 8. Now, i equal to 0, j equal to 0 and k equal to 0 we have taken. What we will do? We will take the exponent first and we will compare. Now you can see this is case 1. If the exponent of the term pointed by j in x2 is less than the exponent of the current term pointed by i of x1, then copy the current term of x1 pointed by i in the location pointed by k in polynomial x3. Advance i and k to the next term. So you can see here, here the coefficient 3 is less than the coefficient 4. So what I will do? So here the exponent 4 is greater than the exponent 3 here. So what I will do? I will take the coefficient 7 and copy it to x3. So 7 will be copied to x3. So x3 will be having a term with x to the power 4 with coefficient 7. Now let us see the algorithm. If x1 i's exponent is greater than x2 j's exponent, x1 i's coefficient I will copy to x3 k's coefficient and 
x1 i is exponent will be copied to x3 k is coefficient and I'll increment i by 1 and k by 1. Now i and k are incremented. Again the same thing we want to see. The, I want to compare the exponent of i equal to 1 and j equal to 0. Here you can see the exponent is 2 here in x1, the exponent is 3 here in x2. Here 2 is less than 3. So I will take this as second case. So what I have to do? If the exponent of the term pointed by j in x2 is greater than the exponent of the current term pointed by i in x1, then copy the current term of x2 pointed by j in the location pointed by k in polynomial x3. Advance j and k to the next term. So if I write it in the form of an algorithm, so x1 i is exponent, if it is less than x2 j is exponent, then x2 j is coefficient I will copy to x3 k is coefficient and x2 j is exponent I will copy to x3 k is coefficient, j is increased by 1 and k is increased by 1. So now you can see j is increased by 1 and k is increased by 1. j value is, now i value is 1, j value is 1 and k value is 2. Now the coefficient of x1 pointed by i is 2 and the coefficient of x2 pointed by j is 1. Now again we will compare, 2 is greater than 1, again case 1 will appear and I will copy these values. It means whatever are there in x1 pointed by i, then I will copy all the location to k2 location of x3. So the same algorithm continues. Now you see i value is 2, j value is 1 and k value is 3. Again we will compare 1 and 1, both of them are same. If both of them are same, I will add the coefficient and write it in the coefficient of x3 and the exponent will remain the same. So you can see the coefficient of x1 was 3 and the coefficient of x2 was 3, 3 plus 3 added and written as the coefficient of x3. So in order to write that in the form of algorithm, if exponent of x1 pointed by i and exponent of x2 pointed by j are same, then what I will do? I will take the coefficient of x1 and coefficient of x2 add it and write as coefficient of x3 and either of this I can take x1 exponent or x2's exponent I'll take and copy it to x3's exponent and I'll increase i, j and k by 1. Now i came to the last, there is no more element, j is increased by 1, now j value is 2 and k value will be 1. Now there is no more element in i. So what I have to do? If there is no more element in x1 and there is there are few elements remaining in x2 then copy the rest of the element in x2 to x3 advanced j and k to track the next element. So here also minus 8 and 0 will be copied to this particular location. So let us see the algorithm, while j is less than n, do x2's coefficient is copied to x3's coefficient and x2's exponent is copied to x3's exponent, j is increased by 1 and k is increased by 1. Same thing might be happening for i also, it means there is no more element in j and there are few more elements left out with i. So in that case also, I will copy all the remaining elements of i to k. Whatever we did to understand the algorithm, everything is written here only. There is no change. You can, you can compare that and you can understand this particular program. Thank you for watching this video till the end. 
keep watching keep learning in our next video we are going to discuss about polynomial multiplication so if you have not yet subscribed kindly subscribe and place the bell icon and if you like the video kindly place the thumbs up button comment and share so we'll see you in our next video till then take care bye